Genesis 19, let me make sure it's on. Yep. <clears throat> the Bible has so much to say about Babylon, or excuse me, my mind's on Babylon because it's on Sodom. Sodom is a, is a picture of Babylon the Great. What God did to Sodom and Gomorrah, He's going to do to Babylon and everything that Babylon represents. You say, what is Babylon? Some people say that America is Babylon or New York is Babylon. Uh, there was a book come out a few years ago called Hollywood Babylon. And uh, it went into the lifestyles of a lot of the movie stars and people that you've paid money to go see and people you might have been fans of. Oh, they're good actors. Boy, I like the way they do. Th I like them in that movie or this movie or whatever. Then you start finding out that a lot of these guys back in those days were sodomites. A lot of the women were too and they were hiding it. They hid it well. Uh, sometimes it might have been known in Hollywood, but it, they just didn't let it out anywhere else. Uh, now it's, it seems to be, they seem to make a big party out of when a guy comes out after he makes a name for himself. And when he comes out as, you know, I'm a sodomite or whatever, everybody throws a big party for him. Yay. He's a great guy and he's very brave and bold and all that kind of nonsense. And, um, it just, th that book, I, I never read it, but I know what was in it. And it basically just detailed the wickedness of Hollywood. Uh, don't ever chase down that dream of thinking you're good enough to be an actor. You're good enough to be in a TV show or a movie or some hit Broadway play or whatever. Because, and I let, let me tell you a little story about um there was a man in this town who was a music director at a, at a church. And a, at the time, a, a fairly decent church. A, a good moral preaching church. They had a good pastor. And um, I was friends with one of his daughters. Uh, in high school, she was about two grades below me, and uh, she had a, a wonderful singing voice, a wonderful singing voice. And uh, she was dating a young man at the time that um, he felt like God had called him to be a missionary. So she, the plan was they were going to get married, and maybe go to the mission field somewhere, maybe go to Africa or just wherever God sent them. And that was her plan. I, um, I, I met her after high school, a couple years after high school, saw her at a gas station. And uh, I started talking to her and asking her how everything was going. She had joined the St. Louis Symphony Choir. And uh, that's a big thing. You have to really, you have to really have the stuff to be part of the saint, be, be part of any symphony. You got to really have the stuff, and and she did. And she stood there as we're pumping gas in, and told me that being with those people taught her that there was a lot of different Christian lifestyles that she was not aware of but that she had sort of become a part of. And I guessed right then, and I was right, and her sister turned out that way too. She had a younger sister, turned out the same way. And um, actually, the pastor of the church had a daughter that turned out that way. And it just went, sort of rampant in that church. There's a spirit behind that. Don't ever doubt that. 
There is a spirit. It's a very strong spirit. Okay. And um, when God warns us about the sin of sodomy and how he specifically said that it is wrong for two men to lie together as a man lieth with a woman. And God specifically pointed it out that, that that's wrong. It's a sin. But then he goes into the fact that that, that sin itself is not um, the disease. The disease is pride, fullness of bread, and idleness. And that's what produces the fruit of, of sodomy. So Genesis 19. Uh, let me read this again. Verse 27. Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And behold, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. So any anytime you see a, a furnace in the Bible or the smoke of a furnace in Genesis 9 or excuse me, Revelation 9. When the bottomless pit is opened up, you see the smoke coming up as the smoke up a furnace, the Bible says. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in that furnace. They, they were in a fiery furnace um, and went and was able to go through that because Christ was with them and brought them through that. And I want you to understand when you're reading those things in the Bible, you're reading you're reading the future. You are reading something that's telling you this is going to happen in the future. It's not just what happened in the past. It's the same God and the same spirits that we see in this Bible are still around. They didn't die off. They didn't go away 2,000 years ago. Christ didn't slay them all at the, at the cross they're still around, they're still active, and this Bible is a guide to warn you about every one of those kind, different kinds of spirits. Every single one of them. Um, I was watching a deal last, in fact, it was Ancient Aliens. I was watching that last night, and uh, it's talking about how different people at times all of a sudden had dreams and or they had some sort of vision or they had something put into their head and they did not know where it came from. But it was a it was a it revolutionized mathematics or it rev revolutionized physics or revolutionized uh, the world. Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs practiced uh, Hindu meditation actually made a trip to India and met with a with a guru there the claim was they he found this man in a cave meditating and the story is no one knows where that man came from he has no story he has no life beyond what everybody knew of him currently and they believed that he was the incarnation of one of the gods appearing on earth in other words a familiar spirit in in real life a familiar spirit and Steve Jobs met up with this man and learned the, the practices that he practiced throughout his life. And Steve Jobs was the, the spirit and mind of Apple computers that drove Apple computers that literally one day changed the entire world by coming out with the iPhone. Changed the world, didn't it? Because now everyone has a very powerful personal computer in their hands that is intuitive, it is user friendly, All you don't have to type in commands like we used to back in the old days. 
You didn't have to load program, load, type in L-O-A-D pro, and type in a program name. You don't have to do that anymore. You just thumb something. When you thumb something, something comes up and it does whatever you want it to. It revolutionized the world. And when did the iPhone come out? 2007? The iPhone? Okay. Well, the iPod was the precursor to that, which led up to that. And uh, all Jobs had to do was add the circuitry to make a phone out of it. And that's what, it, boom, revolutionized the world. Now a person can have instant access to every kind of information that he wants. And all of that came about as a result of what was put into his head. This, and whatever spirit drove that, is is still active in this world today. So now let's um, let's look at uh, Deuteronomy 32. Let's pray, and then we'll get it back into the scriptures. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, you just bless uh, the teaching tonight. Lord, lead and guide us in the direction you would have us to go. Show us great and mighty things. Lord, open our eyes to the things that are going on in this world. And, uh, Lord, teach us, God. We, we all have the technology, every one of us. But at some point, God, we're going to have to set it down, lay it down, walk away from it, or whatever. And God, just help us in, the, in that day. Bless your people. Bless this church. Bless all of those who are part of this. Lord, use us for your glory, your honor. Help us, dear God, to never, to never bring shame to your name. Help us, God, never do that. You are such a wonderful God. Lord, I never, ever want to bring shame to the name of Jesus Christ. Bless your people that way, God, and help us, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Now, Deuteronomy 32 explains it. Explains the Spirit. Their rock, since we were talking about that this morning, their rock is not as our rock. Our rock is Christ. And Christ, wherever we go, Christ is there. If Christ followed Israel in the wilderness, Christ is going with us wherever we go. So, I've got Christ. I've got Christ in my heart. Well, I have the King James Bible in my heart, right there. And I, I love that because I can take that anywhere, have it anywhere, search anything anywhere that I want to, look up, know what the Bible says about anything, know what it says, and not be ignorant. Of what God said in his word. I do not want to be accounted as those who are ignorant of the word of God. I want to know. I want to know this book. I want to know what it says. I want to believe what it says. I, I want to know what it means. I want to know what's going to happen. I want to know. And I'm not going to be satisfied until I know it all. That'll be when I die. Amen. You said that like you can't, you, hurt, you can't hardly wait for it. Hurry up and die, Pastor Mike, so we'll know what you know. Anyway, their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Our enemies know this. Their vine is the vine of Sodom. So, what they are receiving, vines are transmission lines. Vines send... Water that the roots bring up from the ground. Nourishment from the soil. Put it into the grape. So the grape grows and it's real nice, beautiful purple color. Tastes awesome. You just want to smear it all over your face. Good stuff, amen? Uh, 
The vine is a transmission line. Whatever the grape is hooked into, that's what he's going to receive from. And if you are plugged into the vine of Sodom, you will carry with you the attributes of Sodom. You will be the way Sodom is. You will think the way Sodom thinks. And, and again, I'm saying Sodom, I could also say Babylon. Because one is the other. You will think the way Babylon thinks. You will believe the way Babylon believes. You will see the world the way Babylon sees the world. Which means you will hate Bible Christians, the Bible, Christianity, the Word of God. You will hate those things. You will despise those things. And you will want to destroy those things. Even to the point of being blood thirsty. Even to that point. Their vine is the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. So Sodom and Gomorrah and Babylon, that lifestyle is a very bitter, sour, disgusting lifestyle. And the thoughts that go with it are perverted, unjust, uh, corrupt. There's no end to the perversion and the corruption that comes from the vine of Sodom and Gomorrah. There's no end to that. When you think the way Babylon thinks, there's no limit to perversion. Um, one of the men that I've studied recently, a man by the name of Robert Bigelow, he's a Las Vegas billionaire, I've mentioned him before. In going to Las Vegas, uh, talking to someone who knows someone who works for him, uh, his wife died a few years ago. He does not cease to bring home a prostitute every night. He does not cease to do that. He is, a, he, is, he is an old, pervert, dirty old billionaire playboy man. Is what he is. And what he wants... See, he's been studying UFOs and the occult. And he's... he's the two questions in his mind are, are we alone in the universe, number one. Number two, can my consciousness survive the death of my body? What he wants, I know what he wants. What he wants is to keep his money and to carry on with his perversion. That's what he wants. Okay? He wants to carry on with that even after death. Or if he can delay death, that's what he'll do. A lot of billionaires are thinking in that same direction right now. Elon Musk, thinking the same direction. Michaela, where are you? Thank you for sending me that picture. She sent me a picture. Was that Elon Musk? Man, she's on. She's like her papa. She's on top of it. She's got robots that Elon Musk is designing and building. And man, they look way too much like people. Why don't they make them look like boxes, like out of the 50s? Then, then we could handle it a little bit better. But no, they got to make them look like us. And these robots are becoming more and more and more intelligent every single day. And maybe the, maybe, maybe these guys think that they can transfer their consciousness into one of those machines. That's 
kind of what they're thinking. But that's anyway, that's the, that's the vine of Sodom and Gomorrah and Babylon. They want to continue on forever. Everybody who's rich never wants to die because they know the day they die, they lose their wealth. They lose every bit of it. So verse 33, their wine is the poison of dragons. What is the poison of dragons? It is the promise, Genesis chapter 3, it is the promise of immortality. Genesis chapter 3, the serpent said, Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And then the serpent said, verse 4, ye shall not surely die. I, I've changed that. I'm telling you the truth. God told you a lie. I'm, I'm going to correct it. You shall not surely die. That is exactly what these guys are looking for. Is a way out to cheat death so they don't have to die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Ye shall be as gods. Ye shall be immortal and as gods. And gods, where, where do gods live? So, Deuteronomy 32, again, their wine is the poison of dragons. That's, the, that's what that poison is. Convincing people that they can have immortality, but also maintain their sin. The cruel venom of asps, is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? God said, I've got this, I've got this thing in my book of treasures. And I love God's treasure book. Amen? To me, on every page, there's a map to a secret treasure. And I want to find it all. Amen? Amen. John 15. Let's go there. Here's the difference. Here's the contrast. John 15, 1, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Husbandman is, uh, who remembers what the word husband means? House band. Hus, hus band. He is the one that holds the house together. He's the one that binds the family together. He keeps everybody together. Together, house band. A husband man is a man who has a family but owns the fields and he dresses the fields how he wants. He plants whatever he wants. If he wants fruit, he plants fruit. If he wants vegetables, he plants vegetables. If he wants cotton, he plants cotton. He's the husbandman of it. He's the Lord of the land and he can do what he wants with it. So our father is the husbandman. By the, and think about what that means. God, God is the one who keeps us together. Amen. God is the one who keeps us together. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. Purging is never a simple operation. It's never a simple snip. Snip. Okay. It's always going to hurt for a little while. But you realize that God did that to you to make you better. All right. Are there things in your life that you would like for God to go snip, snip, snip? Anybody? Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. Okay. Snip, snip, snip. Uh, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now, let me say this again 
to all of our internet friends. Just watching, let's say, conservative YouTube videos does not count as reading the Bible. Doesn't. Just listening to a sermon does not count as reading the Bible. Now, I don't have anything against you listening to good sermons. Because when I listen to sermons, usually I hear something in there and I stop it. And boy, I mean, I chase a rabbit a mile and a half. Because something, something was said from the word of God that got me. And I'm, I, it's like I never thought of it before. And I'm, boy, I mean, I stop it right then and there and I go chase that all over the place. Chase it through the Bible. And get a lot of great things out of that. So I don't, I don't have a problem with you listening to some messages. That got to watch out who you're listening to. But that doesn't count for you reading the Bible yourself. You can only be clean and purified through the word of God. That's the only way that that can happen. And if you don't purify yourself and cleanse with the word of God daily... Stuff builds up that should never be there. Okay? Now you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Verse 4, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, John... For without me, you can do nothing. Now, not, not me. Me. Without me, you can do nothing. Did I, I change my deal there? You can't. You, you cannot. You will not make it. You will not make it. You'll go get in line for the mark of the beast. You will. If you try to do it without Christ and trusting in him. And this Bible will build the faith in you that is necessary for you to survive the days that are coming. It will. So if a man, verse 6, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. It's a very plain and simple illustration. You're going to hell. If you do not abide in Christ, you're going to hell. It's that simple. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to say something that I, I've not really, I don't think I've really said it in, in a long time. Not, not really this hard. Okay? There is a battle for your mind. And the way you think. There's a battle going on. Every TV show now. Every TV show is designed to make you think in a way that socialists, liberals, Babylonians, sodomites want you to think. In their acting, their scripts, the shows that they put on, the material... The, the talk, the banter that goes on back and forth. They used to have TV shows like Emergency. Who remembers Emergency? And you never really got too much into the personal lives of the people on Emergency. It was about them rescuing somebody out of a, out of a fire or out of a car or taking them to the hospital. Rescuing them. That's what it was about. 
But now, TV shows, movies, um, this lady that I talked to last weekend said that her son has turned himself over after growing up in a conservative church, going to a Christian school, then to a four-year Bible college, coming out of that four-year Bible college, worshiping Thor and Odin and Loki, the Nordic gods of Scandinavia. Oh, and, and Jehovah too. Jehovah's in there too. He's one of those gods. And his mom cannot figure out wh where did this come from? I didn't, I didn't teach him that. Somehow, he disconnected himself from the vine of Christ to the vine of Sodom. He got transplanted. What is that? Romans 11. Turn to Romans 11. You know how it's possible to take a branch from a certain tree, cut it a certain way, bind it to a similar tree, and have it grow from that tree. What is that called? Grafting. Okay. Uh, Romans chapter 11 talks about that. Um, Let's see here. Verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, work graft in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Remember, the vine is the... It carries the nutrients, the water, the DNA. The DNA is what it carries. And puts it into that branch, so that the fruit of that branch... Now is a different fruit than what it used to be. Because it was grafted in. And at some point in this young man's life, he was cut off of the vine of Christ and grafted in to the vine of Sodom. And it has produced out of him a belief in false gods. He really believes that these gods are real. Now, I'll tell you this. I do too. Manly Hall, I about flipped out of my chair when I read this. Said that Thor was the prince of the power of the air. I read that and I did. I went, whoa. Couldn't believe that. That's Satan. Satan. So all those Marvel movies, what were they designed to do? Plant ideas and subject matters. And I want to be this. I want superpowers like that. I mean, I know what this is. I grew up with Superman was my guy. I've never passed up a Superman comic book. If I get my hands on one, I'd get my hands on one. I don't care how old it was. If it was Especially when they used to have the flea market up here at the old movie theater. They used to have flea market up there and somebody always selling old comic books for 10, 15 cents. And if I had 10 cents, I bought them. And I wanted to be like Superman. I wanted to be able to fly through the air and bend steel and punch you in the mouth if I didn't like you and stuff like that. But it's, it's the vine. It is, it is feeding People, this garbage and these lies that they're hooked into. And the internet, the internet was just waiting for the phones to show up. What's next? The implant. Who believes that's coming? The implant. Okay. 
Probably right around here somewhere. But that's coming. The ability to receive data, images, knowledge, ideas going directly into your head. The ability to have that happen. We're just, it's just out, just, it's right there and we, we're almost there to reach it. Almost there. So, um, back in John 15, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Why? Because the way you, the way now you're connected in, you're receiving of the Holy Ghost. You're receiving of the will of God, the nature of God, the character of God. You will not ask for anything that is outside of the will and the nature and the character of God. Therefore, he will give you what you ask for because your heart now is right and it's receiving of the vine of the truth of Jesus Christ. It's receiving of that. And how do we receive of that? Well, we pick this thing up and we read it or we put one of the discs in and we listen to it. If you want one of those discs, I'll give them to you. Okay? But the ability to hear the word of God, I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. To read it, to study it, to know it, to have God put thoughts in your mind that you'd never thought of before. And it's a new way of life, a new way of thinking, a new direction. Everything just, everything works different. And you see the world the way God intends you to see the world. You see it as, I don't belong here. I do not belong here. This is not my home. I, I do not, I'm not a, I'm not, excuse me, I'm a sovereign citizen. I'm not a member of, of the city of Babylon. I'm not a citizen of Babylon. Okay? I can't believe I said that. <laughs> Your laws have no effect over me. <laughs> Bust out my window if you have to, but I'm not, I'm not going along with it. Amen? <laughs> Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Matthew chapter 7, turn there. My, 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 my. Who is Judas Iscariot? He was one of the twelve. He was one of them, wasn't he? He was an inside man. Christ was betrayed by his own. So don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. When people that you thought. Were solid. Turn out bad. Don't be surprised. Okay. And, th and in this I ask you to pray for me every day. And I appreciate those of you who do. I do not want to get this wrong. Now, I'm not saying that everything I say is right. But I do not want to mislead anybody into false doctrine, into false belief, and so on. I do not want to do that. Which is why I didn't go to the Flat Earth Convention. Okay, not, I'm not going to that one. And there are people who are still out there doing it. They're still pushing the earth, that the earth is flat. And we've been lied to. It's Satan's biggest lie. It, really? Prove it. To, prove it to me in the Bible. Show me, show me the verse in the Bible where Satan says, I'm going to lie to everybody about the shape of the earth. Show me that one. 
So Matthew 7, 15, he said, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. What do they dress like? Sheep. They dress like one of us. They look like, talk like, act like, pray like, that they are one of us. But they are not. And he said, how will we know them? You shall know them by their fruits. You shall know them by their fruits. I'm going to say this. And don't be shocked at it. But I believe that it's possible. Right now in America. That there is a pedophile in every church in America. I believe it's possible. That there's at least one in every church. And they dress and act and appear as sheep. But inwardly, they are wolves. So he said, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns? Or figs of thistles? No. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. This Bible is the good tree. Not a good tree. It is the good tree. It is this is what he's talking about. Right here. This Bible is the tree. That will produce good fruit. In a man, a woman, a teenager, a child's life. It will produce that fruit. And manifest it in their lives. So even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Cannot. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So can, can I, can I go up to the Christian bookstore, look around, find a book that looks real good, read it from some guy or some woman and say, boy, there were some really good things in there. I think I'll teach this as a lesson series in our church, but they use NIV. Should I do that here? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And you shouldn't have... Uh, I know a pastor that when I, when I was preaching at his church, he was, had to deal with a man going on right then. And that man was at the meeting that I was at. And uh, boy, I mean, I, I, don't, I didn't know anything about what was going on until the... The pastor called me in his office after I pre and I preached a message just right down his line. And uh, the pastor told me, he said, that guy sitting on the back there that I said, yeah, he said he showed up here. He's wanting to start having Bible studies in his home with a group of people. He's wanting to he's keeps asking me, can 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 uh, can I teach a class? Can I do this? He just showed up here. And I said, find out where he's from. I guarantee you he's been thrown out, asked to leave other churches, whatever. I guarantee you. And I said, I wouldn't have him. I would have a talk with him. And I said, I would not. He, he, he gets up in Sunday school while the teacher's teaching something. If, it's, if the teacher says something this guy don't agree with, he jumps up and says, now, I, I see this differently. And he tries to correct the Sunday school teacher. 
And he, that's, that's just his nature. And I've seen people like that before. And I told the pastor, I said, you just, I said, I hate to say it, but you're going to have to shoot him and get him out of here. Well, not shoot him, but yeah. You're going to have to put him out because, and, and he said, people are calling me and they're, because they're hearing from him all the time and they're complaining about him. And I said, he's, he's there to stir up trouble. The longer that he's there, the more trouble he's going to make. The sooner you get him out, the better off you're going to be. And I said, if God, if God wants to chastise him out in the wilderness, then let God do it. But you probably will not be able to do it. You probably will not be able to chastise him and change him and correct him. You'll have to probably just put him out. And, uh, but he was one of these guys that read these other Bibles. And he's, and God says it, Jesus said it very simple. A corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. It's that simple. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, cast into the fire. Wherefore, by the fruits, ye shall know them. There will be something manifesting in their lives. It's just like a, it's just like a boil or a big zit. If it's, if it's in your skin, you just give it a couple of days. It's going to show up and it's going to be known. Boy, you got a big one right there, man. I can feel the heat all the way over here. You better, you better stand over the sink when you do that one. Because it manifests, doesn't it? It shows up in their lives. In our lives it shows up. Now, I've mentioned this before. The two manuscript lines that make up the Bible translation issue. One of them is the vine of Sodom. It is a manuscript line. That is clearly not the same as the manuscript line that makes the King James Bible what it is. It's clearly not the same text. So that's what he, that's what he meant back in uh, Deuteronomy 32. For their rock is not as our rock, even our en enemies themselves being judges. Our enemies know this. The, the people on the other side who... Fa J James White, who wrote the book, The King James Only Controversy, who despises the King James Bible. He knows that the manuscript line that he favors is not the same manuscript line as what underlies the King James Bible. And he tries every chance he gets... To undermine it, to say how wrong it is, to say it wasn't, it was not put together right, it's got millions of mistakes in it, and he prefers this manuscript line over here. There, it's, we're not arguing over whether or not we disagree. We disagree! Clearly! And the manuscript line is what makes the difference. It's why you will have missing words, missing verses, the name of Jesus taken out into the hundreds, maybe the thousands of times. Well, it's only in there. How many times is the name of Jesus in the Bible? No, that's Christ. Christ is 555. Huh? Jesus is 982. But two of them don't refer to Jesus of Nazareth. One of them is Joshua. The other one is another man named Jesus. Okay, that was his last name. Okay, so 980 times his name is in there. And they, in their manuscript line, have taken it out. Now, that manuscript line and... The, the Greek New Testament that they produced in its 28th revision, that's all going to be different now when the 29th revision comes out and is published. And it will be. I don't know when, but it will be. It's being worked on now. I guarantee you, it's being worked on now. They're going to look at 
things in those manuscripts and, dis and make decisions. Well, we shouldn't have put that in there. So we're going to take this back out of the Greek text so it's no longer in there. So now what has to happen is all of the publishing companies have to go back and revise their translation of the Bible and change their translation to match the latest revision of the Greek text. It is ever changing and it never stops changing. And what does... What did Solomon say in the book of Proverbs about the strange woman? Her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. You can never, ever memorize verses out of modern Bibles because in 20 years they will change the text. Possibly of the verse that you memorized. They will rewrite it, change and alter the text and you'll have to memorize it a different way. Whereas the King James, everybody knows John 3.16. Everybody's known John 3.16. My Meemaw knew John 3.16. Had it underlined in her Bible. Thank you, Meemaw. I love you. Now, second thoughts, I got, well, it's four o'clock. I guess I ought to quit. People, the influence of the world is trying to alter the way we think. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. The TV shows, the daytime dramas, even the commercials, the movies, news, amen. amen, the news, everything is corrupt and designed to change how this nation and the people in this nation think. And there is a revolution going on of people who are saying, we don't want to change the way we think. Even out of people who are not saved. They're rising up and saying, do not change America and the way it is. Do not change it. Uh, I heard, I, uh, listen, I, you can, you can hate me if you want, get mad at me if you want. I'm, I'm not, I'm not on the big Trump bandwagon, but somebody sent me a video the other day and Trump was at one of his rallies and, and they, and somebody said, you're the, you're like the most famous person in the whole world. And Trump said, no, I'm not. And the guy said, yeah, you are. You're like the, you're the most famous person in the whole world. And Trump said, no, I'm not. Jesus Christ is. You can't get Joe Biden to even say the words. So I'm just telling you, people, guard your mind. Guard what you're feeding on. What vine you're suckling from. What vine you're hooked into. Guard that. Protect yourself from that. Because it's dangerous. Let's stand to our feet.